try to listen a lot of music, be open mind, let's see go about it, try to forget about the fame, and coming out a lot, meet some other people. The community is about meeting up face to face, be there, be support, and we are there waiting for you to coming out, and then we are ready to open our hearts, bring you up, and that's how our community will build. Like we support each other. As a promoter, I would say just try to use the old school way, like print out the flyers, go meet the people, giving out, handing out the leaflet stuff. Maybe if you have some mixes, you write out on a CD and give it away. That's how you can bring more people by the old school way, more effective. Word of mouth is the best. So I trust on that. I would say that the vibe, the vibe is the most important for being successful on Kata. Know your place, know, know your venue, know your customer. Well, I think it's it's there's a lot more opportunity now, uh, and the way the scene is structured and how we have social media and internet has made it a lot easier for young producers nowadays. So my, my one key advice uh, when people always ask me about producing music is just to get your stuff out. Like write music, get it out, write as much as you can, get as much out as you can. Um, and that's how you meet people, it's all about network. Um, you know, if you put your stuff out, someone will contact you or someone will like your music and then and then it, it builds from there. Uh, you know, no one no one kind of like writes music and then joins like you know, cocoon overnight or something like that. That's not how it works. You know, so yeah, you yeah. always you gotta hack at it. It's 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 not it's difficult. It's like you don't be impatient. Yeah, every guy has a plan. Yeah. We've been, I mean, as far as our life goes, we've been, I think, really lucky because we've grown faster than we thought we would. Uh, on the production side, we started. I mean, we're getting much better than we used to. There's still a long way to go. We're starting to put stuff out, but I mean, to be honest, like it's gonna take. Like getting even better to to get on par with the the really the pros, yeah. and uh, but the, the idea is that keep working, yeah. don't compromise on your taste. Like you can have to compromise sometimes as a DJ when it's when it's about making your own music. Really do what you believe in, yeah. and be patient. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, first thing, uh, yeah, just try to always do it just for fun first and develop our understanding of music and don't forget skills are really important to just practice. How many hours do you practice in a week? Uh, mostly like uh, four hours, four to six hours. For a DJ, just really find, find your niche. Like I think, you know, there's so much, there's so much music out there that you know you can be able to find your own style just i guess to search like to search for it you know um personally like i don't think there's there's any point in kind of trying to copy well not copy but like to you know recreate another another artist kind of style of music because there's so much music out there even even if if you do think you find your own niche there may be other people out there as well doing the same thing, do you know what I mean? Just do it, do it because you enjoy it, man. Yeah, uh, for the record label, if you're planning to do it on a serious level, it's very, very difficult because there's so many labels out there, man. Like, there's so many, so many labels out there. If you plan it properly, then, then, then that's the best thing you can do, you know, plan your releases, have a schedule, like, really really know what you want to push just not like not not push every genre you know just choose your little thing and i think that that should be that should be it and you know just stick to your to what you like just stick to your style you know? and you, you stick to your style and then yeah, people will notice you yeah. and most DJ they like to play for like the crowd which is yeah. good you know but you play for the crowd but you might play for what you like also and then you make the crowd uh, follow what you like. Maybe 20% give them what they like, and then 80% you say what you like. Yeah, and then I think this will be the direction. I will say for the artist, just forget all and also the promoters. Forget all what you learn in Europe, all what you've seen, and all the log uh, European logical, put it in a bag, forget, start from zero. Like uh, here it's a different logic. 
a different crowd, it's a different everything. Just be open to the, to the people around you and uh, let it flow. Don't stress, don't think about yourself. Just try to make a better world, if we can say like that. Yeah, take a look first at all the existing promoters, because there's uh, many right now. And right now everyone is capturing the, the niche, right? I mean, there's, there's the guys at Moustache taking the, you know, the, the melodic techno side of things. Then there's the, the guys at Safe Room going for a more left field approach. Then there's the, the Studio Lum guys going for like a more live music experimental side. So take your time to explore the different um, areas that Bangkok has to offer. And uh, I can just say, you know, just be genuinely interested in everyone. Don't come in and um, try to push for your thing. You know, get to know everyone, show interest in them, make friends. And although there's a, a lot of competition, I would recommend to, to, to drop that, um, that consciousness of competition that, yeah, I do the best music and this is what people should listen to. Just try to offer original concept. Don't, don't copy what everyone else is doing. It's easy to put up a fancy artwork, invite some DJs and just let them do their thing because that that's, has already been done a lot here. My advice, well, it's lot, there's, lots of, there's a lot of advice flying around, you know. Um, I think a lot of people are quick to give their opinions on what to do and I'm very careful not to tell people what to do, but I think you, uh, for one, need to be in it for the right reasons. Uh, if you're in it for ego or being the centre of attention just for that, then you're probably not going to get anywhere because if you want to do this, you have to love it and live it and breathe it like as if it's your, it's so cheesy, but like it's your religion, you know, it's like something you will never, it will never leave you and you do get a lot of rejection and you do have a lot of difficult conversations and you do have to go out on nights out where you really don't want to go out, you know, and it is a grind, but there's little moments that you get which make it all worth it and they could even just be an hour long and that would like drive you forward for like another six months and what I will say is just don't give up it's so cheesy but the only difference between those DJs that are huge and those that are not, that are not is that they just didn't give up it's not necessarily that they have more talent or that they know more people it's actually that they just kept going and the, the ones who gave up just, just stopped because they thought it was impossible I just don't take in any attention to any negativity either because there's a lot of that. There's a lot of judging in this industry that's just bullshit, like it's not necessary. Um, I think people are far too quick to judge and what I would say is a new DJ, not that cool, but to new DJs is just don't pay attention to it. You just do you and be yourself and just keep working at it. And if you keep working at it and keeping a good person, don't be an asshole do your job properly, you know, then you will succeed, but it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, don't get me wrong, right, so gear acquisition is a totally different hobby to writing music. <laughs> it's like, it's, they're kind of related, much oh. like, you know, like buying clothes is related to going out, but it's, um, you don't need all of this stuff. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have my sound if I didn't have it, but, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, on a laptop and a, you don't need this at all. Um, so, so sell me all your stuff. <laughs> but no, it's um, so the way I see it is, and this is something I only really understood in my thir in my thirties was, you got, you basically got to aim for happiness in life, and a lot of that is about having good people around you, people who can help you achieve your dreams, and people who can hook you up with people, um, especially especially in, in music. So I've got like a really uh, like a good friend of mine, known, known him for two three years. I only met him for the first time like after sort of speaking online for years and he's in music marketing, he's named Andrew and we, he's like such a, he just gives everything, you know, gives to me and I sort of like help, never ask for any money for this. This is his job, you know, he runs a marketing agency, but he, like, so occasionally I pay him for some services, but he just gives and he's like, he's a happy guy, you know, and it's kind of, um, he's like, he's found what he wants to do and I sort of found what I want to do as well. And, and it isn't always to sit for eight hours in a studio, in fact, Kind of the, it seems to be the longer I sit in the studio, the more unhappy I am because actually, you know what, I should probably be playing with my kids. I should probably be teaching them how to read and I should probably be going outside and you know, looking around and kind of thinking about art and thinking of reading and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so I found that 
even though I've kind of got relatively decent setup, you know, two hours a day is probably about right, or maybe even a bit bit too much for me. And um, and cutting back, you know, when I was when I was like eighteen, nineteen, I'd go for like twenty hour studio sessions, come out and it'd be like my ears be flat, and the next day I'd listen to it, it was crap. Where spending a shorter amount of time and breaking it up into segments, I think is good. So. I think it's it's like ninety percent about connections, uh, you know, hard work and get doing doing what you believe is true, you know, kind of shying away from the trends and writing what you, you're producing what you want to produce and listening to a variety of music. I mean, that all goes by the by. That's that's like a kind of fundamental, you know, job application, right? It's like you know you need to be different, but but everything that good that has happened has been down to somebody else working with somebody else you know and it was kind of like you know it was st stuff from connections that all happened so I would say like with with social media I mean it's you know you've got connections everywhere now but um but that would probably be the the number one thing is is make basically make friends give them stuff all the time probably if I, if I looked at my 20 year old self I'm like, I can be nice to people <laughs> <laughs>